It's as American as baseball. Apple pie. And NASA. Lift off. When it was time to give a new car to the original astronauts, it's the keys to this classic that's handed over. Now this iconic American brand is attempting to rocket into the future. With the top of the line 330 kilometer an hour supercar. This is a fast baby. It's the spanking new Corvette ZR1. And it's being built here at a Kentucky mega factory. ZR1 begins as an unsanctioned secret project. A secret whose goal is to transform a regular Corvette sports car into a full-blown exotic supercar. The ZR1 really came out of a review with our CEO. He was so impressed with the product plan and he wondered aloud, geez, I wonder, what would a $100,000 Corvette look like? The off-handed remark by the head of the company leads to a totally unauthorized project. In history, all the, the coolest cars have always come from one guy who said something. Five engineers work behind closed doors. To hide what they're up to, they use a clandestine code name. We couldn't talk about the car, obviously, because people in the hallway or other parts of GM would know we were referring to an unauthorized program, so we came up with a code name. They siphon money from the General Corvette Development Fund and quietly use some for their top secret Super Corvette. No one will say how much, but the total cost is in the millions. After months and months of clandestine work, they reveal their creation to the boss. We put together the technology that we wanted to put in the car, assembled a business case, and then that gets run up the chain of command. They wait, holding their breath. Finally, the man whose off-handed comment starts it all orders the ZR1 into production. No more need for code names. The engineering team publicly calls itself Team Super Corvette. And their goal is simple to describe, but hard to accomplish. Build the fastest, best handling Corvette ever made. A full-blown 330 kilometer an hour rocket ship. We know of no other mass production American made car that'll go anywhere near that fast. The challenges of getting to 330 kilometers an hour are enormous. The engineering issues in getting to and over 200 miles an hour are huge. From zero to 50 miles an hour, you don't have all that much air moving around the car. From 50 to 100, you have quite a bit more. From 100 to 150, it's a lot more. And once you get into 200, you have all things happening. Remember, jets take off at less than 200 miles an hour. Far less than 200 miles an hour. Now, the quintessential inspiration for high-performance cars have been aircraft design. In this case, I like to think of it as a fuselage with a canopy on it. The ZR1 actually shares many attributes of an aeroplane.
Both shapes need to cut through the air with minimum resistance. But aeroplanes are designed to create lift so they can fly. The challenge in designing the shape of the ZR-1 is keeping the car firmly planted on the ground. To achieve speeds like that, you have to manage the air around the car such that you get no lift or even downforce so that the car is being pressed into the ground as you go faster and faster. Managing the airflow around the ZR1 is a delicate balancing act for the team working on the Super Corvette project. As you manage the air that way, typically you increase the drag, and that slows the car down. So you're balancing all these different attributes, which makes it particularly hard to go that fast because it takes a lot of horsepower to overcome that drag at that speed. In the supercar universe, 330 kilometers an hour is the automotive equivalent of breaking the sound barrier. Only it's on the ground. To do it, Team Super Corvette determines that they'll need an engine that exceeds 600 horsepower. Six hundred and thirty eight horsepower to be exact. That's a lot of power to get out of a traditional American V eight engine. It's a challenge that takes nearly three years to solve. The key. Adding one serious supercharger. The supercharger was first introduced on this ZR1. It was a, a breakthrough on supercharger efficiency. So that means it took less power to actually run the supercharger and force more air into the engine, and the net result is more horsepower and better efficiency. Dozens of prototype engines are built and tested, not only in the lab, but also at one of the most famous racetracks in the world. Well, we've taken the ZR1 to the Nürburgring it's in Germany. It's a very long track. It's a very difficult track. Team Super Corvette takes home movies of the ZR1. The car sets one of the fastest lap times ever. For a production sports car with the guts to take on the Nürburgring. Yeah, the Corvette team is really doing this super Corvette. That is the most powerful GM engine ever made for a vehicle. Those 638 horsepower allow the ZR1 to do this. Or this. Top speed runs at 330 kilometers an hour. It uh, propels the vehicle to uh, zero to 60 of 3.4 seconds. Now the challenge is how to actually produce a supercar in a sports car factory. First, they isolate production of the ZR1 engine, building it at GM's Performance Build Center in Wixon, Michigan. And unlike a regular Corvette, every engine will be built by hand. One person does build the entire engine. The people who hand-build the ZR1 engine 
are experts when it comes to speed and power. Uh, I've built quite a few. I'm getting upwards of about 4,000. I actually used to be quite fanatical about it. I used to keep track of the serial numbers and the dates. Every engine was built. Tried to track down where every engine went. It takes about three hours to build one engine. What I'm doing is I pick up each piston assembly. I'm inspecting it for any damage. Definitely a high performance part versus a standard stock automotive piston. Each ZR1 piston has a bowl shape to its top. That allows the pistons to handle the extra pressure from the supercharger without blowing up. Okay, first step is we are going to pick up our block and we're going to install it on our engine stand. Looking for any damage. We're going to install our cam. And we're going to slide it right into the block. We're installing our crankshaft, and we're going to drop it into the block. We do a couple of hits on the front of the crank, and a couple of hits on the back to flatten out that thrust bearing. Yeah, people always love that part when we pull out a big hammer. Time to install some pistons. Okay, our next step is we'll install the water pump. While each engine is built by one man, it sure helps to have a friend to lift the 34 kilogram supercharger in place. Perfect. At the end of the process, the finished engine is actually autographed with a nameplate by the builder. Puts a lot of pride into the engines that are built here. <laughs> that never happened before. When you're an expert engine builder, it's easy to laugh when it's only a nameplate that pops off. But when it comes to what's inside each engine, they expect it to be perfect. When you're developing this much horsepower, we want this engine to run as smoothly as possible. So they do something few other automakers do. They balance the engine. It's like fine-tuning the power plant before it leaves the factory. We're going to actually fire the engine up on natural gas and use the computer to pull a balance reading. From there, we'll actually insert weights, fine-tune the balance of the engine. Balancing an engine has to do with weight distribution. So all the parts move together smoothly. You can see by this indication, these small yellow balls, there is a slight imbalance in the rear and a slight imbalance in the front. So he had small weights at precise points. Final run here, fire it up once more. Give it just a few seconds to smooth out. And we're good. We're within the circle with both our yellow indicators. The engines are shipped to GM's Bowling Green, Kentucky assembly plant. This is where they build the ZR1. Chevrolet's assembly plant in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Opening in 1981, this is the only place in the world where they build Corvettes. We built four different models of Corvettes, all at the same time. I've often said that I've got the best job on the planet. Factory managers like to talk numbers. The plant is about a million square feet. We've got about 450 uh, UAW employees. We've got about 100 salary folks that uh, are here every day doing their piece of the pie to make this beautiful car come together. 
But in Bowling Green, the numbers they like best come from the top-of-the-line Corvette ZR1. I can go 0 to 60 in my ZR1 in a little less than three and a half seconds, but I can go 60 to 0 in 100 feet. So think about that. In less than the length of a basketball court, I can stop the car. The ZR1 is the first Corvette that's a true, outright supercar. The ZR1 is the loudest, screamiest, blow your eardrums out, fastest car we've ever made in America. It wants to kind of scare you a little bit. been working with Corvette for 30 years, and the fact that we would build a 638 horsepower car in the factory is just mind-blowing. The ZR1 is the newest Corvette. The most powerful car the company has ever built. the fastest car Chevrolet has ever made. And the most expensive. they build the ZR1 is similar to how they build all new Corvettes. The most dramatic difference isn't the process, but the materials that they use. Materials that are lighter, but materials that are just as strong, and materials that are far more expensive entire substructure of this car is made of aluminum and the rest of the body is made of composites, lots and lots of carbon fiber. The heavy use of carbon fiber helps reduce weight. And when you're trying to build a 330 kilometer per hour supercar, every gram matters. The fenders are also carbon fiber and they weigh one-fifth, about 20% of what the equivalent fender would weigh in steel. But using lightweight materials alone isn't enough. In order to push the ZR1 Super Corvette to 330 kilometers per hour, Engineers need to shave weight everywhere they can. So they decide to leave some of the carbon fiber pieces intentionally unpainted. But that creates a whole new problem. Unpainted carbon fiber breaks down under ultraviolet rays from the sun. A group of Corvette engineers take on the challenge. They spend three years of their own time after work to develop a technological breakthrough. A glossy clear coat that keeps unpainted carbon fiber from fading in sunlight. It's proprietary to GM. The ZR1 was the very first car to introduce exposed carbon fiber with full ultraviolet protection. That means for the life of the car, the carbon fiber will look good. A lightweight roof is a critical part of the car's design. The reason we have the roof carbon fiber is to take weight out up high in the car to try to drop the center of gravity. 
But Team Super Corvette can't simply turn every piece of the car into carbon fibre. The key is where to use it. The reason we focus carbon fiber on the front is we're trying to maintain 50-50 weight distribution. We've added some weight to the engine with the supercharger, so we take it back out by using the whole front end panel in carbon fiber. Engineering the ZR1 is a balancing act. Sometimes the lightest piece is not the best piece to use. It's kind of counterintuitive, but the reason the rear spoiler is not carbon fiber is because if you make that lighter, you're actually taking weight off the drive wheels and you're actually adding weight to the front wheels. And that's not what you want. You want to share the workload between front and rear. And that's why we got concentrated carbon fiber up front, up high, but from the doors back, none. thing about the ZR1 and the technology that this car has not this car is as good as race cars I drove probably a dozen years ago building a Corvette starts with its frame and from the ground up the ZR1 is different than regular Corvettes the ZR1 is an aluminum frame car for performance characteristics to lighten the car up a little bit the aluminium frame is nearly 57 kilograms lighter than the steel Corvette frames. And light means fast. It takes about a week to build a Z01. And up to 30% of that time is spent just to paint the car. We approach our paint with a very, very discerning eye. I am very confident that we knock down defects from our paint shop that most normal mortals would never see. Our car is unique in that we paint the panels off the car. Body parts for one complete car are placed on a special carrier. On an average day, this booth sees 120 to 130 carriers. First, Every carrier goes through its own car wash. Now, it's time to paint. This is currently the ZR1 leaving the prime spray booth. It goes into an oven where it stays for approximately 35 minutes at 265 degrees. We put it into an oven because it actually cures it. Without the oven, it would stay sticky forever. It doesn't cure without heat. It would be like trying to bake brownies without putting them in the oven. They rub down all the body parts by hand. polishing out any minor imperfections. And wiping the car down by hand to make certain the primed body parts are clean. The body parts move further down the line. They're ready to be painted. For efficiency, they paint Corvettes in batches of the same color. 
This morning, we've seen lots of red Corvettes, but that's not the only color we paint. We paint yellow, black, gray. Actually, we have 10 colors in our palette. The final spray is a clear coat to protect the finish. And another oven to dry the paint. When they actually cure, it becomes a urethane or a polyurethane, somewhat similar to what you might do your floors at home with. After the robots have painted, and they do a great job, we still have to have that human intervention and quality check to make sure we've got the quality product going to our very particular customers. Our folks use their eyes you know, obviously very much to inspect, but they also use their hands. They feel for dirt or any other defect. And it's an art form actually to finesse and look and inspect a Corvette. Next to the paint shop is what they call the car track line. Here, they'll begin to install the first pieces to the bare frame. The Corvette ZR1 is full of surprises. Its power, its speed, and even its trunk. On the car track line inside the Corvette assembly plant, workers subassemble what they call the tub. It forms the trunk in every Corvette model. Robots run a precise bead of glue around the tub. Pick up each tub and then very carefully set it down on the frame. They call it gluing and screwing. Like all Corvettes, the ZR1 has lots of fiberglass pieces, like the bottom of the cockpit. Pieces you never see. Pieces that are both light and strong. At another station, they're pre-assembling the dashboard. There's a huge amount of electronics in our car, period but a lot of that is centralized in the dash. So we put a, a lot of effort into wiring, routing, and other electronics as we build the car. It takes two people to lift the wiring harness for the ZR1. Connecting gauges, heating and air conditioning. and the nav system. We find the most effective way to build this car is to build the dash assembly up separate, assemble it to the, to the frame, to the cockpit and the tub over in car track. We do some sub-assembly work on the cockpit. We apply the urethane, structural urethane to the joint. The U-shaped item behind me in orange picks up the cockpit, shuttles it to the car, and then lowers it down into the joint. What will be the firewall of the car. Robots glue on the front fender liner. 
it takes about seven litres of urethane sealer to glue together a ZR1. Then, a part called the door ring goes on. It's a critical part for the entire car. The door ring, which is what goes around the door opening, it is the first piece to a Lego puzzle. The door ring needs to be centered correctly in the door opening. So this is important that we have the door ring in the correct position to set up the build of the car. A worker applies glue to the door ring. Then a special jig moves it into place and holds it there until the glue dries. The wild looking piece behind me is a uh, Perceptron. And what we do is we center the car in there, and then we shoot laser lights at it, and we pick up dimensional data to ensure that our windshield frame, which is what the cockpit is based on, is centered, and it's where it needs to be. The car leaves here, goes to the elevator, goes upstairs, goes to the overhead conveyor, and it's on its way to General Assembly for the final processing. On its way to becoming the most powerful and fastest car Chevrolet built. Some Chevy workers specifically asked to work at Bowling Green. The top of the line, you know, is what everybody wants. It's a pretty well a waiting list for them. It's a dealership. They want to be part of building the ZR1 supercar. Especially watching one be made, that's kind of a magical moment. A sense of magic that comes from the way they build the ZR1. Well, right now we're at General Assembly. Anything that a customer can see, we end up putting on in General Assembly. From here until it leaves the factory, each Corvette carries a unique build sheet. And if that build sheet happens to have the ZR1 designation printed on it, everyone inside the factory knows that they're building something special, a full-blown supercar. Small parts arrive in carts. They're installed when the car body is still open and easy to work on. Seat belts. Rear speakers. Batteries. Next to the line, they sub-assemble the carbon fiber body panels, which continue to add lightness to the ZR1. They put on the rear fenders. Now the ZR1 is starting to look like a Corvette. The best car they make. Work at the Corvette plant and you build the cars. This is a fast baby. I do the sub assembly and put all the parts I put on and give it to Mary Jane and she puts her parts on. On a ZR1, the rear fascia requires one more special step. It waits for a very special badge. 
I'll tell you a story. A little girl came through and her dad says, she's very unhappy, she didn't see a pink Corvette. I said, honey, you saved your money and then when you get older, you can buy you a pink Corvette. <laughs> They adjust the hatch to fit just right. For a super sports car, there's a surprising amount of room inside the back of the car. The ZR1 trunk has as much trunk room as a typical mid-size sedan, between 15 and 22 cubic feet. So a couple can go cross-country, carry enough luggage for two, three weeks. Hoist swing seats into the car. The doors go on. They add the windows. Then the carbon fibre roof bolt goes on. It's yet another part that keeps the ZR1 light while lowering its centre of gravity. The steering wheel. The windshield. And the glass in the rear hatch. All the glass on the car would fit any Corvette. For the ZR1, some pieces and shapes are different by design. One of the things you'll notice is a larger opening in the front for more air to flow through because the engine requires more for cooling. They subassemble and install a special radiator for the ZR1. It's all aluminium and holds nearly 7% more coolant than a normal Corvette radiator. It's a unique build. A little bit different than typical of assembly plant. There is nothing typical about the ZR1. How many people can go home in a day and say, hey, I build Corvettes for a living? With 638 horsepower, the trick at the factory is putting together all the parts that get the power to the road. We are where the uh, drivetrain is put together on the Corvette. You have your transmission and your torque tube, which transfers the power from the engine to the rear end of the car. In this station here, we uh, assemble front and rear brake system and the uh, axles, which is where you get your power to the ground, from your rear end to your wheels. They add more lightness to the ZR1 by using different materials for critical drivetrain components. It's everything from the engine block, heads, the whole transmission case, differential case, all that is aluminum. They'll be bringing the engine for this car here over and mating it up with this transmission and torque tube. That will tie everything in together right here as far as the drivetrain, the engine, and the front rear of the car. Even the ZR1's brakes aren't metal. That is our ceramic braking system that goes on the ZR1. They're much lighter than traditional metal found on regular Corvettes. We use the largest ceramic rotor brakes that we can fit inside the wheels. If you look at the ratio of brake size to vehicle weight, the Corvette has the largest brakes uh, in the world. Next step, marry the drivetrain to the body. A new ZR1 is about to be born.
the ZR1 Super Corvette is fast. Launching from a standstill. Or flashing across a racetrack in the desert. All that power comes from this drivetrain. A drivetrain that's just been completed in the Corvette factory. Now a double-decker conveyor system moves both bodies and drivetrains down the line. What they call marriage. Act like a big puzzle. If you get it right, it works pretty good. We just raise this up right here, mount the shock up, shoot the bolt. The underbody of the vehicle, the engine, the transmission, the whole torque tube assembly, the brake and suspension components come in position, and the car slowly comes down on top of the uh, on top of the chassis assembly. And now we begin to take the shape of a real car. They complete the exhaust system that gives the ZR1 its very special sound. As new vets move through the factory, they install the headlights. They install the lightweight carbon fiber fenders on the ZR1. And put the car's special logo on the door sill. They install the hood. We build the front fascia, sub it up, and then we put it on the car. We're getting real close right at this point. I love it. I just wish I had the money to afford one. <laughs> Maybe when I retire, I'll be able to. Right on the money. The car is born. When we hit the final line, we actually start it for the first time. You know when you're in one of them. You get down that front seat and sit down in that thing, you touch that button and you hear the roar of that thing, man. Shift in the gear and let out on that clutch. All I want to do is go out the back and not come back. Then it's out of the factory for delivery to customers everywhere. By and large, our enthusiasts tend to drive our car in a way that we designed the car to be built. We don't even put an automatic transmission in the ZR1. It's only a manual, and it's a high-performance manual. That manual transmission can get a heck of a workout. when it's let loose on a racetrack. So does the suspension. But it's helped by computers that constantly monitor and adjust the ride. The ZR1 is a high-tech supercar. If you look under the skin of this car, you'll see computer modules. They don't look like your computer laptop at home, but they're aluminum boxes with circuitry and specialized integrated circuits that do that computation for not just the suspension, but all sorts of vehicle functions. This represents the passion, the interest, the, the engineering technology, and the capabilities of uh, you know, a lot of people. And this is an extension of, of their creativity. A secret, unauthorized project that becomes the fastest, most powerful, and most expensive Corvette supercar ever. The CR1.